And um, what the whole purpose of this place was when we started it was to breed and raise American paint horses and American quarter horses. Now, every piece of property is going to dictate to a certain amount, uh, to a certain extent, how you lay out your your operation. This uh, this piece of land is very much that way because we've got a wash running through it. It's long and narrow. Even though we have 67 acres here, what you will see is that the whole horse operation is on 10 acres. So there's um, there's 33 horses out here, and we have facilities to do lots of different things with those horses, but there's certain basics that no matter how big or how small your operation, you've got to think about. Even if it's in your backyard, you've got to think about certain things. And I think uh, a couple of those very important things is how are you going to house your animals safely? Um, how are you going to, to manage your feed situation uh, well? And are you going to have enough room to exercise your um, animals or to do with your animals what you want to do? So you've got to think about where those things are. Are they going to be convenient for you? The, the system has to work because if it doesn't work, uh, it, it's not going to be effective. You're going you're gonna to struggle. So we're in a hay barn, obviously. A uh, couple of things about feed to start with. Uh, you see on a lot of people's property that they will store feed outside under tarps. Nothing wrong with that, but it is labor intensive because you've got to put the tarps on, you've got to take the tarps off, you've got to do stuff like that. Uh, several years ago, we had this barn built because we had an unsuitable barn that leaked and we had huge rodent problems because it had a dirt floor. Um, so, we, we had this built and since we've had this built, we haven't, every good bale of hay that we brought into this barn, we've never lost. So this is a great place to store hay. We don't have the problem of um, the sun bleaching it all out, and that's going to reduce nutrients. But the other thing is we've got a controllable uh, rodent issue. You're not going to eliminate rodents entirely. But when you have, when this barn is full of 900 bales of hay, obviously there's not much hay in here now, but when there's 900 bales of hay in here, uh, you can't get to the back of the back of the barn to work, you know, to to get at the mice who are nesting. But the concrete floor helps. Um, the uh, the other thing about the concrete floor is even though we have when we load uh, bales into the truck to feed the horses, we can utilize even even the scrap hay, and I put it into those blue barrels. And a full blue barrel for me is equivalent to about two flakes of hay. So uh, if I've got two horses that I'm going to feed two flakes of hay to, if I've got a full barrel, I don't have to take it off, take it off a bale. I can act, actually just feed the loose hay. So you've got to think about saving money, especially as much as feed costs nowadays. You've got to think about that. But good, clean storage of your feed is important. And also about the rodent problem, we do have supplements that we feed to our horses, and it comes in, in bags. Now, I will occasionally keep some bags here. They're elevated on some saw horses to try to reduce the possibility of animals getting to it. Because squirrels do get in, mice get in, chipmunks are here. But um, I keep very little feed like that um, on the ranch. I live in town. I keep most of that uh, at home because we have less of a rodent issue uh, at home. But if you're going to store feed like that, you've got to really think about the mice because that's even more attractive than the hay. And those bags, even if they're made out of plastic, they're, the mice are going to eat through. So when we walk the length of the ranch, you'll see where I have the supplements, and I have 
four different kinds of supplements that I use. I use a, a generalized food uh, a, a protein and, and vitamin enhancer for some of the horses. And it's called Safe Choice. It's a Neutrina product. I also have a youth, life design youth by Neutrina that I use on my young horses. I also have uh, soy meal, which is a great protein supplement for underweight animals. And I have bran. They're all contained in garbage cans. I've got Rubbermaid garbage cans, and they seal very well. And we don't really have any animals getting into those garbage cans. So you've got to think about little things like that. Uh, the other thing is we talk about, we'll talk about safety as we walk the length of the ranch as well. You've got to think, especially depending on what, horse, uh, what kind of animals you have, it doesn't matter if it's horses or goats or pigs, you've got to make sure they have their house in an area where they're not going to be at risk. Um, so, um, and hopefully they're not going to get in trouble. Horses can get in trouble almost anywhere, no matter what I do. But, there are certain things that you need to think about. One thing, if you fill water trough with a hose, don't leave the hose where the animal can get the hose. A couple of things happen. First of all, you can, you can hurt the horse. It can get tangled up. You can lose the hose because they're going to eat it. And even worse, if they pull on it and, and uh, actually break off some of the plumbing, you've got a real issue. It's, a, it's, it's just common sense about some of the things that you do, but if you don't think about, if you don't look at the facility that you've got and look at the potential difficulties, then you might end up having a problem. Um, one of right, the... I've got to get some hay. Okay. My, I'm down on my hay diet right now. Okay. Well, as you get older, you know, some of that roughage is very good. <laughs> um, All that protein. Huh? All that protein. protein. Fiber. Oh, actually. fiber. Yeah, that's fiber. what it is. Yeah. Fiber, yeah. Once, once you get beyond 50, fiber is really, really important. Um, the other thing that you have to think about, like in a corral with a horse, is not is uh, where are you going to put your lead ropes? Where are you going to put the a harness or, or any kind of a, a lead that you're going to lead your animal? We actually had a horse colic because it ate a lead rope. The horse got very sick. It had an intestinal infection. Ended up having a six thousand dollar surgery because the lead rope was left in a place where the animal could eat it. Didn't happen on this ranch. The horse, the horse was sent to someone, um, and they weren't paying attention, and it developed a a stone in the stomach. Actually calcified and blocked the opening between the. Uh, stomach and the intestine. Mm. Now, you know, you would think that that shouldn't be an issue, and I know, I know lots of people who will take their halters or their equipment and put it, hang it on the rail of their of their corral. Maybe, maybe you have an animal that's not going to mess with it. But if there's trouble to get for the animal to get into, they'll get into. So you have to think about those things because the animal could, I, the biggest thing is the animal could be injured, but the other thing is there's, there can be a great expense for you as well. So it's just common sense things that you might think are little, but in the end they can, they can end up being very big deals. Um, since we are not just a breeding facility, we are a training facility. Those two things in, a, in and of itself require certain things. We have to have an area where we can do a reproduct, um, reproductive work. As you came into the ranch, and I just don't think you can...